My name is Matt Stockman. I'm the Director of Registration, International and Field Services for the Pinto Horse Association of America. The following videos just discuss a little bit about Pinto, the, the Horse Association as well as the registration procedures and the new utility division. The Pinto Horse Association of America was uh, created in 1956 in the state of New Jersey by a group of people who wanted to exhibit their colored horses and wanted a place to exhibit their colored horses. So they started an association that was comprised of all anything with color could be registered except mules, Appaloosas, and draft horses. And it was has grown since then to incorporate um, four different types of horses under the horse classification. Uh, those types are pleasure, stock, saddle, and hunter uh, with horses comprised of Morgan breeding, paint breeding, quarter horse breeding, um, thoroughbred breeding, and all the above, and then also some of your gated horses in the saddle type. Um, in addition to the horse classification, you have your miniature classification, ponies, and then now the newest addition to it being the utility classification, which is comprised of horses with gypsy breeding. And so, Pinto, but what the association actually does for the horse is as far as keeping the records of the registry, as far as keeping pedigree records, and so people can know where these horses come from, what the breeding are, as well as Pinto is genuinely a show association. It's a show horse breed. Um, that's what this association's here for, is to provide another avenue for owners and exhibitors and enthusiasts of colored horses to come and show and have a good time. The Pinto Horse Association is involved with the Color Breed Council. Uh, the Color Breed Council is a group of colored horse associations um, that started about 22 years ago and formed this group that trains their judges for each association. We have an International Equine Judges Seminar every year in, uh, here in Oklahoma City um, at the end of January and 500 judges from across the world come in for a week and we go through carded sessions and that's how all Pinto judges you can either apply or are qualified and they'll go through different training sessions throughout that week that talk about the different types that we have and the different classes that we have and cover all the basics and give them a basic understanding of what happens in the association. Utility horses are going to be judged kind of based off of the stock type horse rules in our rule book or in PTHA's rule book. Um, they're going to be focused more uh, as far as like being shown square and halter as well as um, being tracked in the halter classes similar to the stock type rules and um, there will also being judged as far as in performance classes um, based off those stock type rules with uh, Western and English disciplines. The utility division when they are showing will not be shown with other animals. They will be shown separate in their own and like during World Show we're actually going to have a third arena that will run for five days that will just have utility classes in it. Um, but any of your local shows, any other shows, utility will be shown separate from the other types of horses. Uh, PTHA offers shows all across the country as far as local shows within our local charters. Uh, every state in the country has a charter or is affiliated with a charter in some areas. Some states are combined and those local charters put on shows just about every weekend at www.pinto.org under our approved shows list there is a complete list of all the local shows. Uh, now it is not guaranteed that all the local shows are going to immediately offer utility classes. Um, it would be a matter of looking at seeing a show that you're interested in, calling that show manager and seeing if those local shows are offering it. Now on the national level there are two national shows that are done a year, the Pinto World Championship that happens in June in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and then also the Color Breed Congress that happens in November and it's also in Tulsa. Uh, both of those shows are put on by the national office, by PTHA, and both will uh, encompass utility classes. The Pinto Pays program is a deal that you can, it's a program that uh, started, this is actually the first year that it's in, 
in the process of going. Uh, you nominate your horse into the program for a nominal fee uh, based on what division you're going under as far as amateur or open. How the program works is everyone in the specific division, those points are added up and a, va a dollar value is given to per point. And then so you as the exhibitor, say you accumulated 50 points this year, well you will get paid for those 50 points. The dollar amount will not be decided till the end of the year till we see how many points are in that specific program area. But um, it's a way for you, to, it's kind of an incentive money for you to earn money back for showing your animal. Points are given out at the shows as far as on a point scale. You have to have at least three horses in a class. Uh, local shows give out points as well as at the two large shows that we put on a year. Um, points are given out based per judge. Uh, so many points for first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Uh, we pay down to eight eight placings depending on the participants in the class. The, the scale varies uh, depending on the number of horses. If there's less than three horses, no points are counted for the class. If there's over three horses, it's a breakdown and then first place gets one and then go on from there and then you're given uh, so many points per judge. Uh, we, we have actually several other programs we have on the trail that you can actually earn hours for trail riding um, within all of our classification. So this would encompass utility as well as um, any horse that uh, can perform a trail ride. Uh, you can log your hours and get um, hours for that that work towards prizes once you get to certain hour marks. Uh, as well as we have open competition activities program which is our OCAP. And it is you can go to open shows and accumulate Pinto points if it's an OCAP approved show. And a lot of our open shows are. And you go show at an open show, it doesn't have to be a Pinto show, but yet they'll turn it in and you will get points based here in our association. A couple things that we also have that are a little different from other associations. We have our field representative program. Uh, we have field reps in each state and the field reps can actually come out and do on-site registrations for you. Additionally, at our local shows, uh, most local shows will have a field rep on the place. And so if you decide this week, I want to go show my horse in Abilene, Texas this weekend at a show, at a pinto show, but I haven't registered yet, I can contact that show, get a hold of that field representative, and meet them at the show, get my horse registered that morning, be issued a temporary number, and show my horse that afternoon or that same day. So uh, that's something that we have that is very different. You don't have to go through field reps to be registered in our association, but it is a service that we offer to make it a little easier. The only time you cannot do that is at World Show and Congress. You have to be registered through the national office prior to that show. Uh, we do not accept field re registrations at the show. This saddle is based off of the point system that we discussed. Uh, this is the high point utility horse saddle for this year's uh, world show coming up in June. And what it is is at the end of the, all the utility classes, at the end of exhibition for that classification, uh, the total points are added up per exhibitor, whatever those exhibitors points are, and the high point exhibitor is going to get to take this home with them. Registration process, you have two options. You can go to a field representative or contact a field representative in your area and actually have them do an on-site registration or you can send it through the office. Now sending through the office, the way that process works is at pinto.org there are registration applications or you can contact the office and request one and we'll send one to you. Uh, you will submit that application completed with horse's name, you know, the classification being utility, um, color, ownership, all that information that's all on the application. Complete all that. Now you have two options as far as if the horse is registered with an approved outcross or is not registered. If the horse is registered with an approved outcross, such as one of the other Gypsy Horse Associations, you can submit those papers with the registration application and we will actually take the pedigree information directly off of that. And so you don't have to worry about the breeder certificate on our application or any of that. We just need the statement of ownership, the correct information and a copy of those papers with the four pictures and we'll talk just a second about those pictures. 
Now, if the horse is not registered with an approved outcross, such as the Gypsy Horse Association, then you would have to complete the breeder certificate in order to get that pedigree information on there. Um, the breeder certificate consists of a signature of the owner of the dam and of the sire at the time of breeding, plus a copy of their, of their papers if they're registered. If they are not registered and you're not and you can't get the signatures, then at that point we actually have to complete an unknown registration, which is also accepted by the association. And for an unknown registration, it's based solely off of that color requirement. Pinto horses require four square inches of cumulative white in the qualifying zone. The qualifying zone consists of a center point of the knee on the front legs center point of the hawk on the rear legs and then a line that goes from the base of the ear to the corner of the mouth and down excluding the chin. Anything outside of those areas is considered qualifying white and so you can actually um, we require those four inches and then you would submit the application write unknown and then we need four current color photos including a picture of the front rear and both sides but the main thing to know on the pictures is the four the four pictures make sure the ears are included the hooves are included the tails included no tack on the animal besides a halter make sure there's no obstruction to the full view of the horse for each side and just stand a horse in one spot where you can go all the way around him and take one of the profile go to the rear take it Go to the other side, take it, and then go around to the front, take it. Just make sure that there's nothing obstructing the view of the horse. Now, in the case of a minimal white horse, that it's going to be close whether or not they qualify, take some close-up pictures of those spots with the camera and in addition to your four pictures that you send in with the registration. If the horse does not meet the qualifying white, you still have the option of going into our breeding stock division, which is open to solid animals that do not meet the color requirements, but yet either still have two pinto characteristics or are registered and approved. Pinto color characteristics consist of, you, there, there are many, but some of them are multicolored or striped hooves, uh, pink skin, but yet not enough in the qualifying area. Uh, an excessive amount of white, but yet still not enough in the qualifying area. Um, blue eyes, just to name a few of them. And so you figure four square inches isn't very much of cumulative. If you have a couple of spots, you can add those together, as well as if you have a two by two spot on the belly, then that qualifies your horse for registration. Be watching for all current members will have access on our website to a video that is being put together by the association with a breeder from the UK and this uh, video will go through looking at kind of the ideal utility horse as well as some of the judging criteria for that animal and some history about where this breed came from.